morning. Good morning, Pastor Carr. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to church. We are here to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Gathered in his name, we are here to remember the most important things about our Christian faith. If you be gathered in his name this morning. Um, there's lots of announcements. I will give a few of them to you. Uh, we talked about this morning, and Easter egg hunts and burritos and stuff like that. Uh, with the fun is continuing right now. Um, and next week, I want to remind you, next week is Confirmation Weekend. Um, so it's at the 1045 service. Uh, but no matter what service you go to next weekend, you get to see here from the Confirmands and their video project. Uh, but we are celebrating Confirmation next week, so we're very thankful for that, for uh, Confirmation students being confirmed. Um, I want to remind you, just to keep the date in mind, Vacation Bible School um, is on June 20th through 24th that week. Uh, so sign up for that. Uh, we'll be coming soon, but keep that uh, date in mind. Um, let me see here. ILS Spring Musical, that's coming up for our school April 29th. And I was new, so notice that date. It was not the 22nd, it's the 29th uh, coming up. There's lots of others. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, senior youth fundraisers uh, that you can probably read about in your bulletins and in, in the trumpeter. So just remember that they're doing that right now. Um, yeah, I think that's good. <laughs> Six out of seven, Karen, ready? Okay, here we go. Uh, would you please stand? Would you face the cross at the back of the church? And we'll begin with our opening hymn number 457. <coughs>
his mercy has given his son to die for you, and it is for his sake that he forgives you all of your sin. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We speak our enjoy responsibly this morning. <coughs> I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. <coughs> he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain. For the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode. The sanctuary, O Lord which your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord.
book of Job, chapter 19, verse 23 through 27. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has thus been destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. And my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yeah. 
have destroyed all of our enemies. Sin, death, and the power of the devil have been destroyed through your resurrection and life. And Lord, we ask that you would make us witnesses of that resurrection, not just on Easter Sunday, but each and every day of our life. As we wait for, we wait for the resurrection of the dead and the eternal life that is to come. Lord, this morning I ask that you would bless the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts. May it be pleasing, may it be acceptable in your sight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. So in the scriptures, God's <coughs> word makes a fundamental distinction between the one true God, his name is Yahweh, and all of the other false gods in this world. And here is the distinction, and you should, as a Christian, know the distinction. Our God, Yahweh, the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of Israel, the God whose plans and purposes have been on full display this holy week, this God is the living God. He is described over and over and over in Scripture as the living God. When Yahweh warned about idolatry that Israel would, would fall into in the promised land, it says in Deuteronomy 4.28, And there you will serve gods of wood and stone, the work of human hands, that neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. The psalmist confesses the need for this living God, Psalm 42, as a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O Lord. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Jeremiah displays the power and reign of the one and only true God, Jeremiah 10, verse 10. But the Lord Yahweh is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth quakes, and the nations cannot endure his indignation. Peter confesses boldly in Caesarea Philippi, in response to Jesus' question, who do people say that I am? Well, they think there are lots of people. He says then, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And a warning is given by the writer of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 12. Take care, brothers, lest there be in any of you an evil, unbelieving heart, leading you to fall away from the living God. And in many, many other places throughout Scripture, God is called the living God. The one true God is set apart, which is what holy means. He is holy. And he is described as the living God. So what does it mean that our God is the living God? Well, we might spend an entire lifetime thinking about this and meditating upon it and discerning it. But today I have three short and significant answers for you. What does it mean that God is the living God? Number one, our God is the living God because he is the God of life. God created Life. In the beginning there was God and nothing else. And so in this great big wide universe, every single thing falls really into two categories. God and everything else. Creator and creation. God created out of nothing. Ex nihilo we are told, out of not a thing. And out of nothing, he made everything that is. Everything that we know, see, taste, touch, and experience. And so when we think of a living God, we think about life. And it is not only that God created life, but it is that God sustains life. David. In Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we have a God who is intimately, how intimately? Very intimately involved in life, in your life. A God who stoops down 
and lets you bend his ear anytime you want in the gift of prayer. A God who comes to us over and over and over again in his word and in his sacrament to forgive, to renew, and to strengthen, speaking words of forgiveness, comfort, and life to us. A God who sees you right where you are. He sees you at your best. He sees you at your worst. And he loves you endlessly. You see, the false gods do not do this. The idols of wood and stone are deaf, dumb, and blind. They do not hear you. They do not speak to you. They do not see you. The God of self is full of failure and loves to let you down. But the living God is the God of life. He created you and he daily, by the minute, sustains your life. So number one, God is the living God because he created life. And number two, our God is the living God because... He is alive. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen Alleluia. This is what we have come here to celebrate this day. This is what we have come here to remember this morning. This is why we have a joy in our hearts, no matter what evil and suffering exists in our lives. Jesus is alive. Our God is alive. The grave could not hold him. Death could not defeat him. Jesus Christ is risen, and today, today is his victory day. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, just a little bit before our epistle reading today, Paul writes these words. For I deliver to you as of first importance, the word also means primary importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins, in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Paul says this, this right here is of first importance, of primary importance, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why is that the first and most important thing for us Christians? Because if Jesus were still dead, if the Savior died, and then that's it, none of this matters. The music, although very beautiful, Carol, would not matter. The hymns that were written for your edification are pretty, but they don't matter. The readings would not matter. The decorations would not matter. And the celebration, well, it really doesn't matter. <coughs> this is what I have come to proclaim, and you have come to hear this morning. Jesus is, in fact, alive. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And because Jesus is alive, because our God is alive, that means everything matters. Everything about our faith matters. God's word matters. God's promises are sure. Our faith is not just a fun story. Our hope is not just wishful thinking. Our faith and hope is in the living God, and our God is alive. He is active. Jesus Christ has taken death head on and won. And he has shared this victory with you. Therefore, today is not just his victory day, it is, but it is also your victory day as well. Happy Easter, happy victory day to you, children of God. How is our God a living God? Number one, he created life. Number two, he sustains life. Number three, our God is a living God because he gives us eternal life. Here are those words from good old Job, chapter 19, verses 25 to 27, he says, I know that my Redeemer lives, and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints, but it also yearns 
for this day within me. You see, the victory of Jesus Christ over the grave is, in fact, your victory. And it is not your victory because he showed you how it's done. That's not the way it works. He you doesn't know, say, look what I have done. You can do that. You can strive for that if you're good enough. You can have that. This is your victory because his resurrection was accomplished for you. Jesus destroyed the power of death and the curse of sin in his death and resurrection for you. And it's the reason that he would not give in to the assaults and the temptations of Satan that we begin this season of Lent with. If you really are a son of God. It's the reason he wouldn't be distracted from his ministry. Lord, that will never happen to you, said Peter. He says, get behind me. It's the reason he wouldn't take himself down off the cross if he is the Christ saint himself, they said. He did it all so that you would be free. From the curse of sin. He did it all so that you would be free from the, the sting of death. He did it all so that you would be free from the penalty you owe. Paul's proclamation of 1 Corinthians makes this clear from our epistle reading. When, not if, but when the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality. Then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory. Gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. His resurrection means your resurrection through faith in him. His rising again to life means your rising again to life. His perfected body means your perfected body. His immortality means your immortality. Just like Job proclaimed, after this temporary, mortal, and painful life, we will again see God. We will behold Him with whose eyes? With our eyes, in our flesh. Not in a different body, but in a new and perfected body. What does it mean that our God is the living God? He gives life. He is alive in Christ. And our God is the God of the living things, the never-to-die-again things. Jesus Christ is King and Lord of his living, never-ending kingdom. Here is the great Easter promise to you from Romans chapter 6, starting verse 3. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we might walk in newness of life, and not just a new spirit, but a new body. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. And so today we remember, we celebrate, we live out once again the truth Jesus is risen and because he is risen all who believe in him all who bear his name all who have been made children of God will rise too those who have gone before you who we miss who we are spending this Easter without will rise and you will be reunited with them those saints of old, some we've only read about, will rise and we will be with them. This body, go ahead and look at it, this body of yours, this blood, our bodies, will rise. That means nothing can destroy you. 
no cancer, or sickness, or weakness, or sin, or struggle of this life can separate you from the resurrection and the eternal life won for you by Christ. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Yes, he has. And because Christ has risen, this is our victory day. This is the Christian's victory day. And it is a day to proclaim Christ. A day to give unending thanks and praise for our living God. And a day to share the good news in all that we do and in all that we are. May the peace of God who surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand as we together confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? <coughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, on this glorious day, Fill your people with a holy fear at the resurrection of your Son, that we would tremble no longer before the grave, but rejoice and live in the truth of your power to save. Lord, in your mercy, in your honor, let us hold fast to the word preached to us, that receiving it with joy we may take our stand in it and be saved by it. Hinder all who would sow doubt into our hearts, and grant us courage to confess its truth in our life and in our daily conversation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Bless Joseph, our president, and all who make and administer our laws. Frustrate the forces of evil, and do not let our leaders cooperate with them or further their goals. Guard our armed forces as they stand watch for us at home and abroad. Let them serve with honor and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayers. have mercy on the sick and those in any type of need. Let the dawning light of the new creation in Christ sustain them in faith. In accord with your will, grant them renewed health, a foretaste of their eternal healing to come in the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayers. give us joy in your son's great victory feast as he shares it with us from this altar. In the eating of his true body and drinking of his precious blood and faith, overcome our sin by his forgiveness and swallow up our death in his life, that we may be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort those who mourn of the truth of Christ's empty tomb, that in the midst of their grief they may abide in the hope of his resurrection. Uphold them in faith as they await the day when you will wipe away every tear from their faces. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. We join today in singing eternal hallelujahs with innumerable angels in festal gathering, with the assembly of the firstborn enroll in heaven, and with the spirits of the righteous made perfect. And we bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sing the offertory. <laughs>
resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and for the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you in body and in soul and to life everlasting. The heart of his peace, sins forgiven. Amen. Please stand and join me as we together sing. Thank you, Lord. Unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace.